our top story tonight. We begin in the Middle East, where Israel's secretary cabinet has voted in favor of a ceasefire deal with Hezbollah militants in Lebanon. The duration of the ceasefire depends on what will happen in Lebanon. In full understanding with the United States, we maintain full military freedom of action. If Hezbollah violates the agreement and tries to arm itself, we will attack. If it tries to renew terrorist infrastructure near the border, we will attack. Netanyahu added the deal would further isolate Hamas in Gaza and would allow Israel to turn its focus to Iran. In the hours leading up to the cabinet meeting, Israel stepped up its bombardment of Lebanon, killing dozens of people. President Joe Biden also weighed in on the ceasefire. I directed my team to work with the governments of Israel and Lebanon to forge a ceasefire, to bring a conflict between Israel and Hezbollah to a close. Under the deal reached today, effective at 4 a.m. tomorrow local time, the fighting across the Lebanese-Israeli border will end, will end. This is designed to be a permanent cessation of hostilities. And the reaction to the ceasefire agreement coming from Capitol Hill from the senior Jewish lawmaker in Congress. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer put out a statement saying in part, quote, this is a good deal for Israel and the region that will ensure Israelis can return to their homes in the north and protects Israel's security against Iranian-backed terrorist group Hezbollah. Well, earlier in the day, the European Union's top diplomat said there were no excuses for Israel to refuse to implement a ceasefire with Hezbollah. The outgoing EU policy chief said all of Israel's concerns had been addressed in the deal. He also warned that if the ceasefire was not implemented, Lebanon would fall apart. And joining us now to talk more about the latest developments is Ambassador Jim Jeffrey, former ambassador to Turkey and chair of the Mideast Department at the Wilson Center. Mr. Ambassador, good to be with you today. A lot to unpack here, but first, your thoughts on the deal that was reached today. Thank you, Tracy. First of all, this is a huge step forward for a new, more stable, secure Middle East. Second, this has only been made possible because of a dramatic Israeli military success, primarily defeating Hezbollah, uh, but also the overall Israeli campaign since it was struck uh, so terribly on the 7th of October over a year ago. Uh, this agreement uh, is essentially a reinforcement of the original agreement from 2006, which I was involved in uh, up in the UN, uh, Resolution uh, 1701, that was supposed to bring peace to southern Lebanon by having uh, the Hezbollah terrorist faction supported by Iran withdraw north of the Latani River. They never did. This time, they are under real pressure to do so. They have agreed to do so, and Israel will have the right to respond if they do not. Well, President Biden, as you know, said today the deal was, quote, designed to be a permanent cessation of hostilities. Yet, as we know, this is only a temporary ceasefire. That said, do you think there is a chance that Hezbollah could violate the ceasefire? There is a chance, but I want to look on the more positive side. There's also a chance that uh, this temporary ceasefire can last. The Korean temporary ceasefire from 1953 is still in effect um, you know, over 70 years later. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty optimistic that this can, because we know that the Israeli people, after what they went through, will never again allow terrorists on their border. Two, we also know, we have seen this dramatically, they have the military capability to defeat, with United States support, anyone in the region. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are wondering this, Mr. Ambassador, you know, why do you think Israel launched one last strike uh, when they knew that a ceasefire deal was in the works? What do you think was the strategy there? Uh, my first ceasefire in Vietnam uh, in 1973, 20 minutes before uh, the ceasefire began, uh, the Viet Cong was shelling the hell out of us. Uh, this is what happens uh, in war. Yeah, and I know uh, the ceasefire only applies to Israel and Hezbollah and not the fighting between Israel and Hamas. However, um, could this signal a potential ceasefire between Israel and Hamas down the road? Absolutely. Remember, this is all one campaign. Uh, and it's only one chapter in a campaign that Iran and its proxies began 20 years ago, marching through states like Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, and uh, the Gaza, where Hezbollah took over in 2007. And uh, 
having defeated one of the axis of evil, if you could call them, Hezbollah, uh, this means Hamas is ever more isolated because Israel has essentially defeated Iran in the missile exchanges we saw last month. So uh, Israel has achieved most of its military objectives in Gaza. The human suffering is terrible. And I think we are going to see uh, rapid movement, or at least I hope, towards a ceasefire there as well. This is great news, not just for the people of Lebanon, but for the people of Gaza, and most of all for the Israeli people and the people of the region. Yeah, absolutely. And bigger picture here, what does this mean overall for the Middle East? Uh, what it means is that uh, the counteroffensive against Iran, we saw this in the last administration, or rather the Trump administration, the last administration still, uh, with the Abraham Accords between Israel and many Arab states. Uh, then the um, very powerful uh, President Biden support for Israel in its campaign against uh, Hamas, against Hezbollah, against Iran. And now uh, this is opening the door for President Trump and his people who are very focused on this and uh, hoping to build on it and to move in and to solidify uh, what seems to be a real movement towards peace. Ambassador Jeffrey, thank you so much, sir, for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much.